When we perform cataract surgery, an operating microscope provides an unobstructed view of the intraocular structures such as the cornea, the iris, the lens, and the lens capsule. However, there is one section of the anatomy that cannot be visualized during surgery, even with the best microscope, namely the area just behind the iris. Although there are structures that are clinically relevant for cataract surgery, including the zonules, the lens equator, and the ciliary sulcus, it is never known with certainty what is happening behind the iris during surgery because the iris blocks direct visualization. This causes some problems during cataract surgery. For example, a surgeon may miss cortical remnants at the lens equatorial region, and the extent of zonular damage cannot be judged when a zonule ruptures. In some cases, the surgeon is uncertain whether or not an intraocular lens is positioned as intended. Several mirrors and an intraocular endoscope have been developed to view this hidden zone. Unfortunately, however, with the exception of the endoscope, these instruments are not commercially available. The endoscope, however, is expensive, complicated to use, and time-consuming. What else can be done to observe the area behind the iris? An ophthalmologist adopted an idea from dentistry when he saw a dentist use a mouth mirror to examine a patient's teeth. Generally speaking, the mirror is a useful tool for looking at a structure that is blocked from direct visualization. He applied this mirror to ophthalmology and first tried the mouth mirror on a model eye. It worked better than expected. He then modified the mouth mirror for ophthalmologic use and is now introducing a new, redesigned intraocular mirror. A review of the anatomy will demonstrate how the intraocular mirror works. This is the anterior chamber angle, and the arrow indicates the iris root. This is the space between the lens and the iris, the so-called ciliary sulcus. The white line is the capsular rexus margin. The white, worm-like structures are the ciliary processes. How is the intraocular mirror clinically useful? The mirror helps the surgeon ascertain the position of an intraocular lens to determine if it is in the desired location. When the pupil is smaller than the capsular rexus, the surgeon may occasionally be unsure of whether or not the intraocular lens is in the desired position. In this situation, the intraocular mirror is useful. The video shows that a blue haptic which is outside the capsular bag, is well visualized. This is another case that shows a haptic inside the capsular bag. In a case of zonular dehiscence, the surgeon never knows the exact extent of the dehiscence from beginning to end. The intraocular mirror is also useful in this situation. The surgeon can see the area where there is no zonial. The intraocular mirror can be used for successful explantation of an opacified intraocular lens. The key step is the release of adhesion between both haptics and the capsular bag without damaging the zonule. If the surgeon cannot determine the position of the haptics, a zonular break is likely to occur. The intraocular mirror shows where one haptic lies, so it can easily be separated from the capsular bag by using an instrument. During the clinical trial of the intraocular mirror, the ophthalmologist who designed the mirror identified a noteworthy finding. When looking at the surface of the mirror and looking at the retroilluminated area of the cornea, he realized that the endothelial surface is visualized with the mirror by way of either reflection in the mirror or retroillumination. Another phenomenon was noted during cataract surgery when using the intraocular mirror. This is the corneal endothelial surface of a 75-year-old patient at the beginning of cataract surgery. This is the same endothelial surface at the end of the surgery. Multiple irregular patch-like lesions, which seem to be endothelial cell damage, were visible on the endothelial surface after phacoemulsification. The lesions were not present before phacoemulsification. In another case, the same abnormal lesions were found. Interestingly, these endothelial lesions were not seen when viewed directly. 
Compare these two views in the same patient. In the footage on the left, the lesion is not recognizable, whereas it is clearly seen in the footage on the right. This means that with direct viewing, the surgeon does not know what is happening on the corneal endothelium, even though damage to the endothelium is developing during surgery. To determine what this lesion was, the surgeon examined the patient's cornea immediately postoperatively. Slit lamp examination showed the same lesion that was present during surgery. Specular microscopy showed endothelial cell loss in the area of the lesion. The multiple irregular patch-like lesions turned out to be an area of endothelial cell loss, and this means that the intraocular mirror is useful to detect endothelial cell damage intraoperatively. To date, no other tool or device that enables demonstration of endothelial cell damage during cataract surgery has been reported. In summary, the intraocular mirror is a simple and useful tool to view structures behind the iris and the endothelial surface of the cornea. This mirror is useful for confirming the position of the intraocular lens in the eye, defining the area of an absent zonal, exchanging an intraocular lens, and demonstrating corneal endothelial damage during surgery.